today I'd like to share with you the huge influence that Boogie Woogie music had on early bluegrass banjo players such as Earl Scruggs and Don Reno. Boogie Woogie was a popular type of dance music during the 1930s and 40s. It had evolved from ragtime through the stomps and blues. It was first championed by solo piano players. If you want to hear just how intricate the music can be, Listen to this guy, Mead Lux Lewis. You can find film clips of him playing on YouTube. Jimmy Bly's 1924 recording of Chicago Stomps is generally considered to be the first that has the recognizable left-hand boogie-woogie bass run. It was recorded in the key of G, so that transfers nicely to the banjo. Pine Top Smith's 1928 recording, Pine Top's Boogie Woogie, was the first to use the term Boogie Woogie in the title, and it was a huge hit. He even called out dance instructions as he went along. His bass lines were much more intricate and included eighth notes. One way to get the eighth note sound going on your banjo is to use the Don Reno technique of playing two consecutive notes, the first one with your thumb, play the same note again with your index. County would be one and two and three and four and You can hear that sound in Earl Scruggs' famous Six White Horses lick. Eventually the phrases had a greater variety of notes, including many blue notes. Because all those notes are fretted, we can move it. That's a G phrase. We can move it up five frets and we'll have our C phrase. One thing the piano players liked to do was take a phrase of three notes and play it over and over across the bar line. That's a famous phrase from the big band song, In the Mood, which Earl Scruggs used in his backup. Well, I'm rolling my sweet baby's room. Here's another fun pattern that involves three notes. It starts with a hammer-on, so the first one is on the beat. One and two. And the second one is on the end of the beat. And three and. So all together. Boogie Woogie music certainly has elements of jazz, one of them being anticipating the beat, which is where they will start a phrase on beat 4 and with a strong accent. They further get syncopation by ending phrases on the end of the beat. One, two, three, four. Being that Boogie Woogie evolved from the blues, many of its famous songs are merely 12-bar blues. This is true in the very beginning of Bluegrass with Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Stomp. And the chords we will use here were used in Earl Scruggs' song, Foggy Mountain Special. You'll often hear close voicing of the chords in Boogie Woogie music, and what that means is you don't really have to move your fingers too far to get the very next chord. For banjo, we can use G7 as a triad, three notes, followed by C7, D7, and back to G7, all within the space of these four frets. Combine those fingerings with the end the mood roll, and you'll get a sound like this. A one, two, three, four. rhythmic figures you'll hear in Boogie Woogie, one of them being in 4-1. One. One, Where you hear this is when the bass goes to take a solo. One, two, three. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. One last rhythmic figure before we put it all together in a solo. It happens on beats 1 and 2 in. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep your eyes out for all these elements we just talked about as I perform Boogie Woogie Banjo. It'll be played with only solo piano accompaniment. 